Well, Nebraska coach Matt Rule liked his running back room coming into the season. Now we'll see how he feels about his running back room with the news from Monday. You are listening to the Husker 24-7 podcast. I'm Mike Schaefer, joined by Michael Brunts, Brian Christofferson, and we are here to talk about everything Nebraska football after three weeks played so far. Nebraska down a pair of running backs with the news that Gabe Irvin and Ramir Johnson will be unavailable uh, for the duration of the season essentially. Uh, Michael Brunts, what was the uh, what was your primary takeaway when we got that news on Monday morning? Yeah, I mean, you you have a team that wants to run the ball and, you know, win the fourth quarter and, and play Big Ten typical football uh, down their top two running backs. That's uh, not ideal. And, you know, you, you kind of start, we, we could probably get into it, um, what their options are, but that's a group that they felt really good about coming out of the spring. They didn't get involved with anybody in the portal. Um, you know, they added Quentin Ives uh, at, it, late in the class, uh, the 23 class, with with the idea that he was going to redshirt. But um, you know, you w- when you get two season-ending injuries uh, in this, on the same night, you you can kind of get through your depth pretty quickly. But I guess you know the the bright side for Nebraska is you have last year's you know, leading rusher returning and a guy that has already kind of had to be the bell cow uh, by himself. So there's a little bit of history and experience there, but yeah, I mean, the, the, there's no way to kind of, sl- you know, slice it differently. It's, it's a tough, it's tough news. Cause I think, I think they were kind of starting to get a good feel for a rotation and, and kind of how to use three backs that I, I think were pretty diverse and in, in kind of what they did well. It also takes away a couple assets on an offense that, frankly, isn't explosive right now, losing two guys that we were playing quite a bit. That hurts. Brian, let's let's focus a little on, on Anthony Grant. What have you seen? Obviously, the fumble is what everybody knows um, from the first game of the season. But in his playing time in 2023, has he looked like the same back as last year? Have you noticed any differences from him? Uh, just kind of your thoughts on Anthony Grant. Um, I think he's... I think he's maybe finding the holes a little bit better. It's something he's worked at a lot this offseason. That's going to be the big question, though, as we get into the Big Ten. It's can he be that guy who on the runs where they need to be three- or four-yard runs, he makes those three- or four-yard runs, and they're not like one- or two-yard losses. He's got to be that guy who's getting north and south, isn't trying to bounce it out to the outside and make a 50-yard play. But he can be a physical back. We definitely saw that on Saturday night when he went right into a Northern Illinois defender and gave out more punishment than was given to him. And um, I think he's got the highest end talent uh, in that room. Always have thought that it's just a matter of if um, he can be that guy sort of in between the tackles, it's really consistent, but um, he's, he is the most explosive of the backs. He has been that way. And uh, now he's just got to be available. That's the biggest word. Can he be durable for the rest of the season? And if he is and he's solid, Nebraska can kind of skate through this uh, really tough situation okay. But if not, man, it's getting dicey after that. Brunt, let's just kind of dive into that game on Saturday. Nebraska put up 35 points with its backup quarterback in Heinrich Harburg. He made his first career start. Matt Rule's first game at Memorial Stadium. We'll we'll get into the defense, I'm sure. But what what kind of takeaways did you have leaving the stadium Saturday night? And, and as you think about it, kind of looking back here just a, a few days later. Yeah, I, I thought. I mean that that's the recipe you saw. I mean that's what they want to do. They want to. I think they ran for over 90 yards in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, really kind of put that game away and, and took the air out. You could you could see. Yeah, that 14 play drive in the third quarter that that was when, you know, they kind of started leaning on uh, Northern Illinois a little bit. They actually on that drive went more than 100 yards because of penalty yardage. But, um, you know, I I thought Harburg was composed. I thought that he did everything that you would have hoped he would. He did. I mean, he he showed some toughness in running. Um, You know, I, I thought he made some some throws when he had to. And there weren't a lot of situations in that game where he put the ball in a bad spot. There was one, there was one in the, I want to say middle of the game where it was nearly picked. Third but quarter. It, the third, third quarter. quarter. Yep. Going um, to the North end zone. That was the only one where you're kind of like, you held your breath a little bit. But other than that, I thought he played efficient football. They, they stayed on, on, uh, 
on schedule. And, you know, I, I think the thing about kind of the context of that start, Northern Illinois front, I thought was pretty good. Um, you know, they, they, they gave Nebraska some trouble up front early on. They were moving a lot. They were bringing pressure. And, you know, I, I think that was a, a good test for Harburg and kind of what he can do. Um, so, you know, I, I, I just, you know, you go back to the, the, the way things kind of broke out and we'll talk about the defense, but I, I think that kind of an offensive night is, is what Matt rule would like to see going forward. It was just efficient, complimentary football. And frankly, it, if, Heinrich Harburg would have played like that in the season opener against Minnesota. And I know it's different games, but you probably walk out of Minneapolis with a win there. I mean, that that's just, uh, you know, how steady he was. And I think that's kind of what, what you would have hoped for in a backup. And, and we've seen it in Nebraska when they've had to go to the backup quarterback, how out of sorts that can get in a hurry. Um, you know, for anybody that lived through that 2015 Purdue game, anything can happen. So, um, <laughs> You, you, you kind of hold your breath a little bit, but I, I thought he was really good. I, I like that you went all the way back to 2015 when last year we watched a musical chairs game of quarterback in yeah. in season in the middle of a game. So. Yeah, no, the 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 15 game against Purdue was the ultimate. There's no way Nebraska can lose this game, right? And then, oh, there is a way, and it looked like that. So yeah, well, you you take on David Blau at your own peril, you know. <laughs> That was the, the the origination of the Blau out. So, yeah, there's, all there's, right, yeah. But before we go too far down the David Blau memory uh, memory lane, which Brunt and I love to do as it is, anyways. Yeah. BC, your thoughts uh, from from the offense on Saturday? Kind of what what stood out to you about the Heinrich Harburg experience, uh, and sort of where Nebraska's offense is at three games in as they get another opportunity on Saturday against Louisiana Tech to kind of work on some stuff before that Michigan game. Yeah, I mean, I think they know their weaknesses. They are running for 5.14 a carry, which is a decent number, um, a four of the way into the season. But they just don't have a D threat. That We knew that going in. It still hasn't shown up. They've tried to hit Tommy Hill a couple times um, and just haven't been able to do it. Um, I, I thought Heinrich played as well as he could have played, and I thought it was interesting after the game when Rule said, uh, actually, they pitched it around there more than they expected going in. I think they gained confidence in him by the way he played and saw that he's not putting the ball um, up for grabs or in danger a lot. And um, like Brunt said, there's only one throw that I found questionable. I love how Harburg runs it. I love how physical he is. I love how in the post game he talked about, like, I know what my advantage is. It's my size. I'm a, he's a 225-pound quarterback that guys do not want to tackle. Now, he's got to be careful in some cases where he took some big hits. He gave them out, but he you know, he also was on the end of some things where he maybe could have uh, helped his body out a little bit. As he goes forward, that's something he might want to keep in mind. But all in all, for a first start, that was about as good as I as he could have done. And, um, you know, I thought he threw the ball better than a lot of people were expecting going in. And I think he found a chemistry with Fedoni. I like that. I like that Marcus Washington's becoming maybe that guy you can get to on like that third and nine play they needed in the fourth quarter. That's going to be a big thing going forward. Score positives from it. And as Brunt said, this is the recipe. People can like it or not like it, but if if they've paid attention all offseason, um, Nebraska's playing like Iowa right now a, a little bit. I mean, they're they're and you know, they're gonna try to win the field position. They're like the drive in the second quarter that started on the eight where they got it to the fifty and then pinned them down at the one and then took advantage. That's going to be Husker football this year if it's successful. They're gonna do stuff like that. And a big stat, this isn't about the offense, but it's going to be if Nebraska's defense can get off the field on three and outs in those moments where they put a team inside their five or 10 yard line, like they did Saturday night. Um, And if they can't, um, it's not going to go as well. But if if, if they can be that group that just steps up to those moments, um, you know, I, I think that can be a really successful recipe for the Oscars. Brunts, as you sort of look at things, um, with with the passing game and and Brian mentioned Thomas Fedoni what kind of lift could Nebraska get if Fedoni's able to continue to steadily get better i mean you look from week 1 to week 3 i think his snaps are up 
Obviously, his production is up. He's got a touchdown in the last two games. But this one came, obviously, in, in more of the run of play and, and less kind of mop-up duty. What are your thoughts on, on this sort of uh, the chance of Nebraska's tight ends kind of leading things a little bit in terms of the of Nebraska's passing game? Uh, because through three games, it's hard to say that you've got a guy that can get you consistently 70 to 75 yards every time out. Yeah, and I don't I don't know that that's necessarily what the tight ends will be, but I think they can be volume receivers in this offense. I mean, you look at what Fedoni did in that game the other night. I mean, you hit the seam route, you he made that really nice catch along the sidelines, and you can you can still see like there was a catch he had over the middle where he kind of spun and and tried to cut it up field, and it's I think it's probably a play that pre-injury he probably breaks and and you know gets some more yardage from um but he got tackled you know right there on the spot and he was pretty upset with himself I, I think that's kind of the last thing to come is just the explosiveness and, and how do you make a short game or you know make a short catch and then and then turn it into a big game I, I think that's kind of the next thing for him but he's a big physical target I think people need to remember that he's so far played what four college football games and, and we'll give him credit for the two snaps that he had against Wisconsin um, a couple of years ago. Um, I, was, I but, was trying to think about what game I don't have in my brain right now. Yeah, but. no, it, it was, it was just that one game um, where he yeah. came back a little quick and, you know, you, you're, you're starting to see him build a little bit and get some confidence. And I, I know everybody was, you know, seeing him shushing the crowd and things like that, but I think he's a guy that probably, um, Deserves a little bit of patience. Um, you know, when you go through two major knee injuries, uh, coming back from that's going to take some time. Um, but I, I think you can kind of start to see that he's playing with a bit more confidence, and, and he's he's certainly always been a confident guy. So I, I think that tight end spot needs to be a little bit, you know, more of kind of what we were maybe expecting Billy Kemp to be with the short catches and things like that. Um so, you know, may, maybe that's something that they can continue to, to kind of build on. But it, it feels like Fedoni especially has a really good rapport with, with Harburg. They, they, they just felt like they were really in sync in that game. So I'm, I'm eager to see if that continues. BC, Brunt's mentioned patience. How, uh, how do things now look three games in for Nebraska's offensive line, second year under Donovan Rayola and – a lot of the same pieces, but we're seeing a little bit of movement um, with, with some of those guys up front. Yeah, I think it's been okay. I'm not going to go uh, too far with that. Um, and in praise, I think they, I mean, they, they, they've done sort of what they've been asked to do in some of these games, like Minnesota. If you go back to that, that they were, they were grinding away into the fourth quarter and, and all with we go back to this all the time, but without the fumble, they do end up probably with two thirty to fifty positive yards rushing, and they grind out a win just as they had spoken about all off season. Uh, Colorado, uh, not as good obviously with the snap issues and communication problems and all that stuff. Um, I think there was a few worrisome series early in that game Saturday, uh, where it felt like uh, I don't. Some of it was, uh, I don't know if it was lack of communication or what, but some guys just came untouched. And I know Northern Illinois, as Rule said, was doing some different thing on defense that Nebraska didn't maybe um, foresee. And so maybe that played a part in it. They did adjust as the game went on. And they played really a good fourth quarter. It was uh, that that's where you would highlight and say, Rule always talks about the fourth quarter. He talks about building to that and being that tough team. And they ran for 90 some positive yards in that final frame. So th there is good stuff there. And like I said earlier, they're averaging 5.14 a rush, which is a good number. They're 22nd nationally with 209 yards per game rushing. So there are some good stats. Um, but this week I, I'd, I'd love to see some, some more punch out of that, hand it to the eye back and let's see what they can do with Anthony Grant, get a guy over a hundred yards, that sort of thing. I know they don't care about those individual stats so much, but I, I think it'd be good for the Husker soul to see a starting running back for like 145 and it's on 19 carries. And it just like kind of looks right on the numbers too. So we'll see if they can do that. 
Yeah, um, Brian, we are going to have you jump out and then try to, to log back in. The The sound is a little bit off here at this point, so go ahead and do that. Um, let's everybody take a break. We'll make this a, a good time to pause, and we'll come back. We'll see if we have Brian Christopherson with us. We'll still have Michael Brumps, and we'll still be talking about Nebraska football when we return. All right, Brunts, let's dive into the defense. Nebraska's defense had, I, I mean, it's it's tough because you have to put in the context of it being Northern Illinois. I think it's tough because you need to put it in the context of it being Rocky Lombardi. Uh, they had one of the better performances, frankly, we've seen out of Nebraska's defense. I mean, you look at yardage allowed. If you look at, you know, just how they went out and played, obviously three points came um, you know, as a result of that fumble inside the five yard line and the other eight points came at the very end against guys that are just getting their feet wet in college football, Nebraska's defense did exactly what I hoped that it would do. And it didn't have a letdown game and it came out and it played really well against Northern Illinois. What were your thoughts on what Tony White's group went out and did on Saturday in Memorial stadium? Yeah, it was one of those efforts where, you're watching it and it was it was fun watching defense you know like this is a group comparatively that, it has been more fun watching the defense all yeah. three games this year that's a low bar <laughs> but no i i think i think you can appreciate i think people can appreciate how they tackle how they rally to the ball like i'm trying to think in the last couple of games colorado was a little bit less this way but there haven't been a lot of situations so far through three games where an opposing receiver makes a catch or a ball carrier is in space and there's not more than one defender around him. Like it, it's almost this season been a little bit surprising whenever a guy doesn't go to the ground the first time he's met with a defender. Um, and, and the other night it, it felt like a one of those efforts where you don't really realize how dominant it was until you kind of go back in the fourth quarter or after the game and start looking at stats and you're like, Oh wow. They, they really did have that game in complete control. Like you mentioned the field goal, Northern Illinois didn't run another play in Nebraska territory until uh, that last drive. Like that, that's, you know, how good they were. Um, the fact that they had Cam Linhart who only played, I think, I think Brian had him at six snaps in his snap count thing. Blaze Gunnerson, the same thing. Both those guys have been battling injuries. So you have to go to AJ Rollins and guys further down your depth chart that, you know, you've, you probably felt good about, but, you know, maybe with everybody healthy, they wouldn't be such a big piece of the rotation. Uh, and those guys were disruptive and played well. I mean, I, I, I think it's pretty impressive the number of guys that Nebraska's playing on its defense right now and you're not seeing much of a drop off between whoever the starter is and the next guy you know at that jack spot you know Mikai Bears there now uh Chief Borders played a lot MJ Sherman comes in and we were even talking in the press box you know MJ Sherman played much today uh like a, a drive later he comes in and gets a sack like yep. it's like yep. oh there he is um and then you know I, I think we probably need to highlight the work that Nash Hutmacher has done so far this season. He's wrecking shop in the middle of that defensive line. And Pro football focus doesn't believe it. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they uh, that's not surprising. But Northern Illinois had a lot of trouble early in that game with the cutbacks weren't there, the, you know, on um, – you know, obvious passing situations, whether it was Hutmacher, Ruquan Buckley got in there and did it too. They were doing a great job of collapsing the pocket with, from the interior line. It was just a really, really good effort. And, you know, it it is Northern Illinois. They were overmatched. But you're, you're seeing week to week a building of this defense, and you're seeing new players emerge with each passing week that are having bigger roles. And – I think that bodes really well um, going into – we're talking about this, a schedule where there's going to be a lot of close, winnable games. And I think that this defense, though it's early, is the group that you can really lean on to you know, kind of carry you to some of those wins if the offense is having an off day. Yeah, and I, I think one of the remarkable things is how 
it just sort of seems like they can plug in a piece. Like you mentioned AJ Rollins. He went in and it's it's not like he was Reggie White or anything out there, but he went in and he was really solid. I and so I guess my my question for you, and I, I don't want this to just turn into a bunch of hyperbole, but my question for you is when is the last time you remember a Nebraska defense where it felt like you could plug in this many different players and it wouldn't, you know, break basically. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I guess I, I don't know how exactly to explain it, but in back-to-back weeks, you have Makai Bayer stepping in because he earned it with the Minnesota performance on special teams. Great against Colorado. You have AJ Rollins stepping in because of injury really good against Northern Illinois at a position that he just started playing this past spring. Uh, so, I mean, he obviously played in high school, but you know what I mean? He just started playing right. at the college level this past spring. Is there something about Tony White's defense that just allows for, uh, you know, these guys to, to, to pick it up and step right in right away? Well, I, I think, I think part of it is, is that there was always depth there. Like, I, I think they've got guys on that side of the ball that can play. I think, I think there's, Tony White's defense, I think, is complex when you're having to go against it. I think there's also a simplicity to it as well, where you can kind of plug and play guys. Guys kind of make the defense their own a little bit. And I think part of it's just attitude. I mean, you know, the I think they were helped by the fact that they tackled a lot in the spring. Um, you know, I think I think especially early in the season, you're seeing the benefits of that, um, of, of guys being a little bit more efficient with their tackling. Um, but beyond that, you know, I, I just think that Tony White's a really good teacher and you have to, you have to remember, you know, this defensive staff did not come with Tony White. Like they were all learning this defense for the first time too, in the spring, and then having to turn around and teach that to their players. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think, you know, there were some questions maybe about who Matt Rule had on his defensive staff and some guys that maybe lacked experience at the college level, but I, I think that they have good assistant coaches on that side of the ball. So I, I, it's all of that. I mean, I, I like you don't want to make it a ton of hyperbole because I, I still think there's areas for improvement there and you want to see it against, uh, you know, some more power five defenses, but I think there are and takeaways. You want to see yeah, some actual takeaways. You want to see some takeaways. Um, so, you know, I, 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 they're on a great trend and, and they're, they're going to have to keep it up. And it, it's this week is going to be a lot more of a different challenge where, it's going to be more of a Colorado type game. You know, Louisiana Tech's going to air it out. They're going to play tempo. They're going to try to run as many plays as possible. So, uh, a little bit of a different challenge from what they saw this past week against Northern Illinois. Yeah, what's interesting with Louisiana Tech is they are in their own sort of quarterback situation. They benched Hank Bachmeyer. Got hurt? Uh, you got hurt, or they benched yeah. him? Uh, I was reading it was a shoulder thing. Okay. Because he noticeably just goes out at the end of another drive that uh, they don't score on. And then yeah. um, Jack Turner leads to sort of a furious comeback for him. Yeah. Um, they ran the ball actually a lot in that North Texas game, which I think has a lot more to do with North Texas than it maybe does against, you know, what Louisiana Tech wants to do. They threw a bunch earlier. They played four games. This will be their fifth. Uh, not uh, – not an opponent that I think should stress Nebraska heavily, but someone that can certainly come in here and if things go right, can put some points on the board. And so a a little bit of a unique challenge for the defense and it'll be interesting sort of the personnel grouping that they choose to go with uh, to, to try to line up with how Louisiana tech attempts to attack them will be interesting as well. Um, As you kind of size up individual pieces on this defense, Aside from maybe Nash Hutmacher, who's been the most impressive player for you across the first three weeks? Because I'm guessing it's Nash considerably. And at least I guess it would be for me. So I'm I'm assuming it's for you as well. But if we take him out of the equation, who else is kind of jumping off the page for you? Yeah, you know, I was curious coming into the season about the John Bullock hype, right? Like you know, this is a guy that had been primarily a special team standout. They move him to linebacker. Um, you know, he gets a single digit. He's a black shirt. Matt Rule's talking about how he's a Sunday player. Um, and you kind of want to see it. And he, more than anybody on that defense, I mean, he hits. 
Like he really hits. It's um, also super consistent, right? Like he's he just is. in the right spot. He's always around the, the running back or the ball carrier. Um, sorry, go on. Yeah, I was saying he plays well in space with, with the background as a defensive back too. Um, and, you know, he's doing that out of position and splitting reps with Reimer and, and Henrich and, and those guys. And, I, you know, linebacker, I, I need to go back and see what we said at preseason, but that was the group that I think everybody was kind of like, okay, that, it seems like they've got a lot of depth there, but how's this actually going to work? What's it going to look like? I think he's really been a standout to me um, with the way he's played early on. On the back end, I, you know, I was a little skeptical of Deshaun Singleton and, and Omar Brown just because we hadn't seen either of them much at all at Nebraska. I think both of them have been pretty solid uh, as a safety duo back there. Um, you know, again, I, you know, Omar Brown, you're starting to kind of see what we had heard about him at Northern Iowa, just given the opportunities. So that, that's been good. I, is there anybody I'm missing? Like who, who's kind of stood out to you um, to this point? Javen Wright uh, yeah. is a guy that, you know, he's had uh, several, I think, intriguing games out of these first three. He had the interception on Saturday, which is good to see because he had a couple opportunities against Colorado that just went right through the hands. He was just a little slow uh, in those moments. And so it's great to see him get one against Northern Illinois. I think he's one of those guys that kind of part of that depth that I'm talking about. It's not like he has to be out there. I mean, that's kind of the great thing about this defense. Nobody has to be out there for every snap if you have, you know, enough complementary pieces that can give you these breathers. And then the great thing is, in theory, and these are always, you know, in theory, and it's easy for, for you know, people like me to say when we're not the ones out there, but the idea being you get the guys sort of best reps when they are out there if it's able to be a little bit condensed that way. And so – um, I think that has helped as, as much as anything. But Javen Wright kind of stood out to me. Um, you know, like even the guys that we expected to be good to great players, Luke Reimer and Quentin Newsom, have just been able to just be rock solid. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there was a couple times where we saw Luke Reimer just completely shoot the gap because of the work that Nash Hutmacher was doing up front. And his speed is still such a great asset for them at linebacker. You know, Quentin Newsom. Uh, nearly had his first interception right there. Uh, you wonder if Nebraska still had the ability to challenge a play, or you kind of wonder why that wasn't reviewed at the very least. But I only got to see one angle of it, so I don't know. Maybe he wasn't in, and maybe it was obvious. But uh, Quentin Newsom, you know, another guy that – nothing flashy. There's not been like, a, you know, all Big Ten type start to their seasons. But there's certainly been – these are critically important guys, and they're playing well. And so you'd like to see that too. They're they're doing something that's I think kind of difficult to do in college football nowadays too, where yes, they're leaning on veterans. They've got veterans out there who are are playing big roles in their success, but they're also you're also kind of backfilling with depth of young guys, but you're also but you're doing it. You're not waiting for like a blowout. You're not waiting for you know a, a Fordham type opponent to to put Riley Van Poppel in there. You know he's he's in there on the on the second series. He's gonna be so good. Yeah, I, he's just gonna be so good. He is. So you're 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 you can kind of see what you know what it looks like a year from now or two years from now of guys that you're gonna be leaning on. I mean, he had Rollins out there. Van Poppel was out there. Prince Wall was out there a ton. Uh, Cam Linhart would have been out there. Bayer, I think, is going to be a big piece in that linebacker group going forward. Same with Wright, even though he's been around mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. Um, so th that Butler. I think that th that's difficult to do, um, and, and and to kind of you know build that during the season. And I think they're doing it effectively. I mean, it, I feel like I say it all the time, but you know how good a group is is whether or not your second or third team guy can play, and you don't even notice that he's in there. And I think defensively, they're close to doing that. We'll see if they can do it against better opponents. But I, I think th they're they're on a really promising start right now. Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, let's dive a little bit into special teams play. Um, you know, it was a bounce back game for Brian Buscini. Still have no idea what happened in Colorado. I will still be somewhat miffed by that whole thing. Uh, but uh, a bounce back for him. He dropped an absolutely perfect uh, punt that it felt like, you know, watching that thing as it happened. And you see Sanford just kind of running and you're thinking, is he going to like actually catch this in the air? And the answer is no. He's so good at what he does. And Buscini's so good at what he does 
he's Johnny on the spot, just standing right there waiting for that ball to come right to him at the two yard line. I mean, yeah. How many good, times? Oh, that was go a ahead. Good moment too. Yeah. Oh, it was it was critical. I mean, it was, it was absolutely critical. How many times can you recall Nebraska actually executing that sort of situation uh, with their their punt unit? Because I I can think of like maybe three times in the last five years. Yeah, it's been a while. I mean, I that group. I mean, they've been solid, and not spectacular. Like, is that a is that a fair assessment through three? Oh games? yeah, no, I don't. There's definitely room for them to get better. But the thing is that. You know, I wanted to see how they would bounce back after what I thought was kind of a poor showing in, yeah. in Colorado and in almost every phase of special teams. Yeah, no, they – and I, I I, would need to go back and look, but I think the starting field position was about even um, in, in that game against Northern Illinois, which for Nebraska, uh, that's a win. Well, they'll, they'll, take, a, they'll take about well, even. Well, considering that they started once at the three-yard line. Yeah. No, they were, they were down, I think, at least – almost 15 yards at some point in that first half. So <laughs> remarkable. Um, but no, they, you, you haven't had kind of the big flash plays. You had Ramirez um, return against, um, I think it's Minnesota kind of being the lone standout, but you got to figure what, what that's going to look at, look like now that he's out um, for the season who steps in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, they've been good enough, good, good enough, not great. Um, and I think that's okay. I mean, I, I think as long as they're not taking things off the table, I think that's okay. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's fair. Let's uh, let's hit on a couple of recruiting things before we finish this out. Brandon Baker in for his official visit. He caught up with Greg Biggins. He's got his decision coming. Uh, Brunt, you know, it it sounds like the visit went well for Brandon Baker. It sounds like he really likes Matt Rule. What percent chance would you put on this? Would you get it? Can you, can I get you above 10%? I was going to say, I was going to say less than 10. Yeah. I, that's how I feel too. I think in a lot of ways, this sort of feels like the kind of thing that sets up if he goes into the transfer portal, maybe Nebraska gets another look at that, at that time. He really does like Matt rule. The the family really likes Nebraska. It just feels like it's going to be Texas or Oklahoma or Texas or Ohio state. Like I just yeah. think Nebraska's running a pretty consistent third uh, with Brandon Baker. Yeah, no, I think that's that's a fair handicap of things. Do you? There was another official visitor. Yeah. Are you, are you going to say his name, or am I going to say his name? Why, why don't you tell us about him? <laughs> okay. I, I thought you were going to do the work on it. No, no. <laughs> okay. I'll work, right. I'll, I, I'm just. I you're setting the pick, and I'm just lobbing it over yeah. the top. So North uh, North Liberty, uh, the home of Keelan Smith. We've talked about Jay Sean Ross before. He is a edge defender. He is built like a, uh, you know, I, I always say this, a Greek Adonis. Like he is just, he looks like he could step onto a, a football field and play at the college level just from a physical standpoint of how he's built. Um, he's had a, a nice start to his season. His recruitment has always been bizarre. I've talked about this. I've written about it. Um, he told me in Kansas City that he's not even involved in his own recruitment. It sounds like that has changed uh, quite <laughs> quite a lot based on some conversations I've had. Nebraska appears to be in a good spot. They had him in for an official visitor or official visit. He's friends with Keelan Smith. Keelan Smith, the Nebraska commitment at uh, wide receiver or tight end. And this is a situation where, you know, I think Nebraska would like it to, to end quickly. Sorry, if you hear Slider, he's come right over to the microphone and is trying to, to get on the show. He has, he has an opinion on what's happening right now. But, um, you know, Jay Sean Ross is is also interesting because a lot of teams that were recruiting him or had reached out to him have now moved on. He kind of like at one point in early August insinuated, hey, I'm open to anything. It's kind of making it seem like no one was really reaching out to him. We know Nebraska is interested. And now Wisconsin is another team that I guess is coming in pretty hard for Jay Sean Ross. So they just offered recently. Wouldn't be a surprise if he ends up taking a visit there. Uh, and this now went from, hey, Nebraska's got a kid in Kansas City. This could be pretty interesting to, you don't want to see that kid playing for Wisconsin. Because we know what generally happens when Nebraska loses these types of battles. Those kids go on to be pretty good. And uh, Jay Sean Ross, I think, is someone from both the perspective of the Kansas City area. You want to keep building inroads there. Also, just a guy that I think has the ability to be a difference maker off the edge, and you can never have too many of those players. So it was very interesting to see him pop up 
as an official visitor. Last thing, recruiting wise here, Caleb Benning, uh, his timeline has moved up from the end of his high school season, which would have been in late November, to it looks like this could happen uh, between the now and the end of the month of September. Brunts, it sure feels like Nebraska is going to walk away with with a commitment here of, of a legacy in, in Caleb Benning. What what kind of lift do you think that kind of provides both how people feel about Nebraska's recruiting class and then just what he adds on the back end in, in a secondary? I Again, it hasn't happened yet, but it sure feels like it's headed in Nebraska's way. No, I mean, he's, uh, you know, plays at a school with a lot of, a lot of recruitable prospects at Omaha West side. I think that that helps. Um, I mean, you've seen him play multiple times this season, I believe. Um, just, just once this season, but once. Okay. Um, but I, I think he's far outplayed what his rating is, um, from, from most recruiting services. I think he just has a feel for the game that, um, you know, allows him to play faster and, you know, it has, has been, you know, the best player on the field um, when, when there's been a lot of good players on the field. So I, I think he fits, you know, what Nebraska looks for in, in a safety. Um, you know, I know that Evan Cooper has a ton of interest in him. They, they've Nebraska's never wavered in that. And, you know, I, I think that's, you know, it, it would be a, a good win for Nebraska, even though it seems like perhaps there's not, uh, a, a ton of options, other options out there for him right now. I think Nebraska is in a really good spot. So um, is there anything I missed there? You've, you've seen him more than I have. So I just, I see a guy who feels like a, a pretty good fit for this defense. I mean, he's someone who has absolutely no concern about coming up into the alleys to hit. He is someone that is going to, uh, you know, fight for every opportunity to get on the field, whether it's special teams or in the flow of the defense. Um, I it just feels like one of those those good fits, and it's not remotely a surprise to me. Kind of, you know, knowing Caleb certainly more than I know Evan Cooper, but the personalities of both of those individuals, Nebraska's defensive back coach and and Caleb Benning, but that's a that's a pretty good match right there. I think that they uh, would work well together, and I think Nebraska would stand to benefit from that, and it would it would kind of put to bed, you know, a little bit of angst that some people have felt uh, regarding you know, where things are at in state, because at that point you've largely locked up most of the, uh, the best players in the state for this year. You are in a good spot, you know, moving forward in 25 and, and 26. There's a handful of players that are already hearing from Nebraska uh, in that regard. And, you know, here's the thing they had, what would you say? Conservatively 35, 40 kids on, on campus for their Elite. first home game of the year. And yeah. so that, they're going to get more opportunities to, to keep bringing players in, whether they're from in-state, whether they're like Alex Mansky and CJ Simon, top guys that they like for 2025 that are from Iowa and, and Oklahoma, respectively. As we expected, as we saw Brunts, multiple kids from Texas from the 2025 class and, and beyond are, were up uh, for the visit weekend. So recruiting, you know, while it might be starting to slow down for 2024, it is going to pick up exponentially for what they want to do in 25 and 26 and beyond. I, I know the 24 class is, is for the most part wrapped up. Um, you know, their numbers wise, they're, they're, they're going to be a little tight um, in terms of what they can add, but what, what do you make over the last couple of weeks? I mean, the last couple of weeks you've seen Nebraska make a few 24 offers that were outside of the guys that, you know, the, the bricks, the Bennings, the guys that you've kind of been watching for the last mm -hmm. few months. Do you expect to still see Nebraska pursue some senior film guys? Because it yeah, seems, you, you it seems like it. that's the types of yep. offers that we're seeing going out now. I think when you look at the sort of guys that they offered, and you hit on something that I was actually planning on sort of touching on and writing on uh, this week. But if you look at some of their recent 24 offers, those guys have been putting out, you know, their first three games, their first four games, they're having good starts to their senior year. Uh, and we know that this staff still wants to put an emphasis on senior film. We know that they want guys like an Eric Fields, like, you know, others that kind of pop up that play well as seniors uh, because they I think they view that as a as, you know, uh, you know, a potential advantage in the market. If everybody's doing one thing, you got to have something else that you can sort of use to your advantage. And the walk on program has always been one of those for Nebraska. But maybe if they're one of the teams in the Midwest that isn't completely full that has some spots available or is always willing 
to continue to take players and figure out the roster later, which is kind of how it feels like the staff is going to be. Um, that allows them to, to, you know, find a gem or two that other people aren't looking at, or, you know, might end up at a group of five school or a lower level power five or what have you. And I, I think that's smart. And whether it's somebody like an Anthony Rezac that you're keeping tabs on in state, you know, the, the big offensive tackle from London, uh, NFL offensive Academy or excuse me, NFL Academy over there in, in England. I mean, so they're, it's it's near and it's far. I mean, that just tells you that these guys are always going to be looking to add talent to their team. Yeah, that'll be interesting to follow because, like you said, I mean, you're at that point in the year. I, I'm not going to be surprised at all if you start seeing the 24 that pops up on campus for visits over the next couple of weeks, just because yeah. you're you're at that time in the in the fall and you're, you're you're getting that senior film starting to roll out. We're 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 at the point where there's going to be an official visitor and we're going to look at each other and it's going to be like, who the hell is that guy? Yeah. You know, like that, that's going to happen. And so I'm, I'm already mentally prepared for it. So I would anticipate everybody else should be too. If you enjoyed today's conversation, guess what? You can find a lot more of that stuff more in written form though at Husker 24 com, where we have everything covered Nebraska football related, whether it is the upcoming game against Louisiana tech, whether you want something deeper, looking at the rosters, if you want to go back, look at the snaps, look at everything. We have that at Husker 24 com. You can find all of that there. And of course we have plenty of recruiting coverage as well. We'll be back later this week. We are going to continue to work on Brian Christopherson's internet. We're going to try to get him involved and we are going to return for a hype cast as we get you fired up for Nebraska's uh, attempt to get to 500 as they play Louisiana Tech this weekend. We have a special guest and everything lined up. That'll be later this week. You will get that on Thursday. For Michael Brunts, for no longer with us, Brian Christofferson, I am Mike Schaefer. We are Husker 24-7. We'll catch you next time.